Welcome to Physician Academy. Today we're going to talk about DPP4 inhibitors, also known as gliptins or dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors. Now you know why they call them DPP4 inhibitors. They're called gliptins because all the medications have gliptin in their name. So citagliptin, saxagliptin, and linagliptin are the common ones, and we'll go over their, those as we get to them. The DPP4 inhibitors reduce uh, glucagon and blood glucose levels. DPP4 inhibitors increase incretin levels, the GLP1 and GIP, which inhibit glucagon release. In turn, this increases insulin secretion, decreases gastric emptying, and decreases blood glucose levels. All wonderful things in our type 2 diabetics. The adverse effects. The adverse effects including our for this medication are the neuropharyngitis, headaches, nausea, heart failure, hypersensitivity, and skin reactions. They also may get joint pain. And for those who are taking sulfonylureas, there's also an increased risk for low blood sugar. So as with all the newer medications, as we use them more and more in our patients, we're learning more information. So a couple of issues that have showed up with the DPP-4 is the question of cause of mortalities and heart failure as well as pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer and other issues. So in 2014 there was a meta-analysis that found no favorable or harmful effect of DPP-4 inhibitors on all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, or stroke, but a marginally statistically significant increase in heart failure. So you need to be aware that you may increase the heart failure in the patients. We'll discuss heart failure, obviously, in another lecture. A 2014 meta-analysis also found no evidence for increased pancreatic cancer risk in people t treated with the DPP-4 inhibitors. The, in 2014, there was another review found the increased risk of heart failure with saxagliptin and alogliptin, prompting the FDA in 2016 to add warnings uh, to the relevant drug labels. What are the common drugs that are out there? There's cytagliptin, also known as Genuvia, which is one of the ones I use a lot, saxagliptin, uh, Onglyza, and uh, linagliptin, Trigenta, alogliptin, as Nessia. So we start cytagliptin. It comes in a 25, 50, and a 100 milligram uh, pill. And we start it uh, at 50 milligrams daily. More commonly, it's going to be at 100 milligrams daily. But it's nice to start at a lower dose, monitor the patient, see what's going to happen with the patient, and see how they respond to the medication. Saxagliptin comes in a 2.5 and a 5 milligram. So we usually start that one at 2.5 daily with a max of 5 milligrams daily. This one is clear 75% in the urine and 22% in the feces. Linagliptin is a five, comes as a five milligram daily tablet, so it started once a day, five milligrams, and that's cleared 80% in the feces and 5% in the urine. The alogliptin comes as a 25 milligram only, and it started as 25 milligrams once a day. The nice thing is there are combination pills. There, Genuvia comes as a combination, uh, Genuvamet. That's citagliptin and metformin together, and that works really well. So you can give it as a combination pill, and there's less pills for the patient to take. So how should you monitor the patient, and when should you decide to change therapies? The common monitoring would be, again, the same thing as for most of the medications, which is a complete metabolic panel and a hemoglobin A1C. And you check that at the beginning of therapy, and then every three months, Monitoring, monitoring the patients and adjusting the treatment as needed.